Joining me is Queensland's Deputy Opposition Leader, Jared Bly. Uh, Jared, thank you, Jared Bly. Thank you very much for joining me. Did the Premier make a mistake or did he lie? Well, hi, Andrew, and thank you for having me on your program. Well, Queensland Premier Stephen Miles lied. It's a clear case of lying to Parliament. Not only did he lie, he deliberately lied and he tried to cover it up. And it wasn't until evidence was produced on, uh, in the media that showed he lied and then he's tried to cover his tracks now. But the reality is he lied in Parliament, he tried to hide it from a right to information request uh, and uh, all he's offered today is an apology. It's not good enough. A Premier who lies in Parliament, what should he do? Well, uh, Stephen Miles, the lying Premier we have in the state, said this morning that he apologised and he couldn't rec recall sending a text message. And this is something you don't forget. You, you remember sending a text message to one of your colleagues. Uh, so I, re I uh, said that the Stephen Miles is trying to use the Joe Biden defence that he's forgetful in nature. Um, it doesn't cut it. it. It doesn't cut it. And Stephen Miles learnt from Anastasia Palaszczuk about cover-ups and uh, lack of transparency and openness. And unfortunately, we're seeing that continue with Stephen Miles. Uh, the opposition will be referring this to the Speaker in a hope that it goes before the Ethics Committee because there should be serious consequences for a Premier that deliberately lies and misleads Parliament, which Stephen Miles has clearly done, until he got caught out. And now they're trying to distract the issue about a photograph. It's not, that's not the issue. The issue is the Premier did it, he denied doing it, he covered it up, and he's apologised only because he got caught out lying. Is that a resignation issue for you? Well, that's a matter for Stephen Miles and the Labor Party, uh, but he sh seriously needs to consider his position. Uh, Queenslanders need to consider whether they trust him, and I don't think Queenslanders can trust Stephen Miles. We've got two by-elections in Anala and Ipswich West on the 16th of March, and I think Queenslanders should send Stephen Miles and the Labor Party a very strong message that Queenslanders don't like premiers that lie. They should vote against the Miles government. And just clearly say this form, uh, this, this level of integrity is not acceptable to the people of Queensland. Um, if he lies on this, what else has he lied about in nine years in office and what will he lie about in the future to win an election? That's the real question for Stephen Miles. Now, I remember the days when ministers did resign for misleading parliament, but uh, it seems that's not uh, the done thing anymore. It's uh, curious for me. It's rather sad. Um, and as you suggested, uh, Jared Bly, it, it, it seems for now that the only person facing punishment is the unnamed politician who took the picture of King's phone and exposed it all. She was furious about that. Have a listen. Last night, a report on Nine News showed an image of my mobile phone on my desk within the Legislative Assembly while the proceedings of the Queensland Parliament were occurring, taken on the 11th of October 2003. The image was clearly taken from within the chamber by a Member of Parliament sitting behind me. This is a serious breach of the rights and privileges of a Member of this House and a breach of trust by an elected official of the Queensland Parliament. Order, Members. Mr Speaker. Order, Members. Their actions amount to intimidation of a Member of Parliament in the discharge of the Member's duties. Jared who took that picture and should they be punished? Well, the Labor Party are trying to find that out, the, the whistleblower. And the reality is the member for Pummerstone, uh, who was just shown in your program there, was complicit in the lie of Stephen Miles. Uh, she could have corrected the record in Parliament since November last year and she chose not to. So she is just as bad as Stephen Miles in this regard. And I'm not going to get into the details of uh, who, took, who took what pictures. That's a distraction the Labor Party are trying to make out today. The reality is, though, the serious issue is Stephen Miles lied to Parliament and his member, the Labor member for Pummerstone, also covered it up since November last year. And they're both angry they both got caught. That's their issue. It'd be rather strange if the whistleblower gets punished, but the, the liars do not. That strikes me as rather odd. Well, the Labor Party now, have a history of that, Andrew. The Labor, Labor Party have a history of going after whistleblowers. That's the problem. They, they, they seriously do. The member for Maryborough, in fact, wanted a list of whistleblowers that had submitted to an inquiry about integrity in Queensland. Why would a Labor Party member want to know who the whistleblowers were submitting to an integrity inquiry? Obviously, to go after them. That is their behaviour. It's the Labor way, but it's not Queensland way. 
Jared, like, the Premier is also under fire for not visiting a tent city that it sprung up in his own electorate. Homeless people camping there, people with children even, uh, people with jobs. It's just so sad. Even a woman who was released from hospital only yesterday after a bladder operation. Is a tent city really where she should be? Now, my question is this. Is the tent city really the Queensland government's fault? Or is this what we get from out-of-control immigration into this country, which has been importing half a million people in a single year, faster than we can build houses for, or, well, for Australians now? Well, Andrew, I'll comment on what the Queensland Government, as a State Member of Parliament, can do and what their uh, track record has been on this regard in housing crisis. It's, it's been atrocious. Stephen Miles, the Premier, was actually the planning minister that has seen under his watch a 30 per cent reduction in land being released and available for Queenslanders to build homes. He was the infrastructure minister that has seen a, seen a destruction and uh, wasteful expenditure like the knockdown of the Gabba for the Olympic and Paralympic Games. He was the minister responsible for the housing crisis. Uh, now, we find out today this tent city for working people in his electorate, uh, just on the border of his electorate, are living in tents. These are families, these are working families that can't afford rent, that can't afford the aspiration of owning uh, and having the dream of owning their own home. It is absolutely at the feet of the Miles government. They have been in power in Queensland for nearly a decade. Whether it's the housing crisis, the youth crime crisis, the health crisis or the cost of living crisis, it lays at the feet of the Labor Party, the Labor government and Stephen Miles. Look, uh, Jared Blair, you're probably uh, right on some, on some of that, but I have to say, let's not forget the elephant in the room, the immigration program that brought our parents, uh, well, some of our parents from Holland, for instance. Uh, it's now totally, totally out of control, and Australians are suffering for it, including the poor Australians there who should be the first consideration for a Labor government. I must say, but thank you so much indeed for your time. Really appreciate it.